Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bing. I'm a photo and video maker. So it's been a while that I didn't upload any videos. It's because um, I was fighting with my depression and also we were working on a lot of personal projects. I feel so guilty that I didn't... I hope you understand. I'm doing my best. Thanks for your support. Enough, enough. So in today's video, I want to share with you the gears I'm using in this studio to make my YouTube videos. Because I know there are more and more people are starting to make YouTube videos. They might be very creative people, but things will get tricky if they don't know much about video making. I hope this video can be a good reference to them. So this YouTube studio solution can provide you a 1080p resolution, very good outfocusing, decent audio, and also a dramatic lighting. So let's get started. So first, let's talk about camera. Of course, you can use your smartphone. They are very powerful nowadays, but they are highly limited for efficient video production. If you want to make your workflow easier, you better choose a real camera. They can be much, much convenient, makes your work easier. Right now, I'm using a Canon EOS M6. It's a very old camera. It was released in February 2017, but it's still powerful enough for YouTube videos. It can shoot 1080p up to 60 frames per second in case you want some slow motion. No 4K. I wouldn't say 4K is meaningless. 4K is important. The image was so crispy, so clear, so many details. I love 4K. But what I want to point out is the 1080p files have compact file size and it's still the highest resolution of most users' display devices. This camera has the 3.5mm microphone jack. It allows you to plug in an external mic. You can have decent audio without an external mic. And it has a dual pixel autofocusing, uh, which is the main reason I chose this particular model. No one from other brand can beat this camera on autofocusing around this price. Other highlight point, it has a flip up screen, it's very good for vlogging, love it. It also has pro level body design, it has three dials to allow you change the settings very quickly. And it's powerful for photo shooting, so... So you can pick it up for around $400 on eBay with the kit lens. It's a great price, right? Well, to be honest, right now I'm using a Sigma 18 to 35, which is the expensive lens. But in this video, we keep it low budget, so I will switch it to the kit lens. 15 to 45 STF. So this is the lens I was using in the beginning of the video. It's great, but it's expensive. Right now you can see it's a kit lens and it's wider. The aperture is much smaller. It means you get less light came in. So I have to boost a little bit the ISO. You may notice that uh, there are more noise, but it's okay. The big aperture signal lens can give you better low light, beautiful background blur. But in the studio, you can control the light, so the kit lens will be just working great. For vlogging, this is the only lens I want to use because I tried to vlog with this lens. The image is great, but just this lens is heavy enough for me. With the camera on it, I really can't hold it for a long time. If you want a better low light and nicer bokeh, the Canon EOS M 22mm f2 is a good choice. But the 22mm will be like... The 22mm will be like this.
I'm using the Aperture A Love mic most of the time, and I also use this Rode VideoMic Micro time by times. Yes, this lovely mic is not convenient because it has a long cable. You have to connect this uh, to the camera and this side on. But anyways, the quality from this lovely mic is great. You'll never be regret to use this lovely mic. Here's everything you get from the package. This microphone is uh, around $40. And the second generation of this microphone has just been released, I mean one year ago. <laughs> the new generation of this microphone named the DIT A Love. DIT is the sub-brand just got separated from the Aperture. So it's a professional audio equipment brand. The new generation of this microphone is also super affordable. It's around $50 I think. It's much compact than this one. When I need some flexibility I will use the Tascam DR05 recorder with the Rode VideoMic Micro. Just like right now, I'm using the Rode VideoMic Micro connect directly to the camera. Uh, normally, I would use this as a preamp and they're working great, but sometimes I'm just too lazy. With the recorder, I can boost the audio level a little bit without adding additional noise. So it's a very good solution. For using this solution, you need to set the audio level on your camera as low as it can be. Then you boost the recording level on the recorder. Then you get a very clean audio. And this combo is basically a Rode VideoMic Pro. Plus, it's just a little bit chunky. Not so beautiful, not so easy to use, but the quality is great. For vlogging, I would just go with the Rode VideoMic Micro. It is very compact and the quality is fairly good for a small size mic like this. And you can roughly put it in your bag and don't worry, the suspension mount will always go back to its original shape. So I'm using a key light and three other ambient lights behind me. Look at this key light, it looks fancy, doesn't it? But the main part is this cheap LED bulb. You can find this on Amazon for around $15 and the result it can give you is actually very good. With this $25 Godox softbox, you will get a much better result. It's not dimble, but you can control the brightness by adding more diffusion close. Well, the choosing of the ambient light can be much casual. I'm using two RGB LED bulb. One is here, pointed to the wall. And another one is here pointed to my head for some uh, hair light. And they can be controlled by Google Assistant. There's no flicker. Each of them cost 8 euros. I just picked them up in the local store. And you can totally use them without this light softbox. And the last light I'm using is behind me. It's the Yumo Air 300. It was my key light here. But now I put it behind to light up a little bit the background because these LED bulbs are too bright for the background. By the way, the ambient lights, the hair lights, the background lights, they're great, but you don't have to buy them. You can just use the light around you in your home, like a lamp or some IKEA light. If you want to change the color, you can use some color gel to cover them. Use your imagination. You don't have to spend too much on the light. As long as there's no flicker, it'll be great light. <sighs> I'm so thirsty because my tongue, it's just not used to speak English. The last thing, acoustic form. As you can see here, here, behind me, all around I put several acoustic forms. And they're totally optional. They're just some knockoffs. I put them here to fake some professional lookings. Yeah, more or less they will absorb some echoes and provide a slightly better audio. But if you really want some high quality audio, you should looking for something else. Okay, that's all the gears I'm using. So as I said, this YouTube Studio solution can provide you the full HD resolution, which is just fine. And the decent audio, also super good autofocusing. I love the autofocus from this camera. And the dramatic lighting, yeah. These are the basic things to make a good video. 
What do you think of this solution? Please leave a comment down below. And yeah, that's the video for today. Thanks for joining me. If you think this video is useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. More content are coming. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. This is the audio test. That's enough.